everybody, welcome back to my channel, That's Ready Homeschool. I'm Mrs. T, and today we're going to be reviewing this book. It's called Teaching Montessori in the Home, the Preschool Years. It's by Elizabeth G. Hainstock. And I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of information about this book, tell you what my thoughts are, and yeah, it's a little book review. That's it. It's a, it's a book review. But <laughs> All right, you guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at this book by Elizabeth G. Hainstock. Now, it was originally published in 1968, um, but I am reading the new updated edition from 1997. So one thing to kind of be aware of if you do pick up this book is it is a little bit outdated, both in its writing style and some of the content. So the way that this book is broken down is there are basically six sections and um, each section has a different goal. So the first section is kind of introducing Dr. Maria Montessori, who is the inspiration of this book. The second thing, or the second section, gives some practical life exercises. The third section talks a little bit about um, sensorial experiences that your preschooler can go through. <laughs> We have in section four, just reading and writing exercises. Section five is really arithmetic and early mathematics. And then the, the last section, which is section six, is what they call the um, home education, home Montessori equipment. And that is basically, um, they have like recipes and how-to guides on how to build the different um, materials that they reference in the earlier sections. All right, so I just wanna kind of break down each section here and give a little bit of information. So again, that first section is talking a lot about um, Dr. Maria Montessori, her teaching methodology. If you don't know very much about her, she was a huge education pioneer from the late 1800s to like the early mid-ish 1900s. So her teaching methodology, while very forward thinking at the time is again a little bit outdated um, but it is still full of some very good information. So this first section talks about preparing your home, preparing your school environment and they talk about like ways that you can do that is getting all of your your schooling equipment low level one area so you, you and your child can reach them, smaller chairs, smaller tables, etc. So basically you're trying to create an environment that allows your child to explore and to self-drive what they want to learn about. Um, the second section gives some practical life exercises. Now, let me tell you, this one made me laugh because it's so outdated. <laughs> there were definitely some things here that I'm like, it was just very funny. Um, one of the activities is teaching your child how to polish silver, which great. <laughs> I'm not fancy enough to have silver. I don't even think my, I don't even think like any of their grandparents have silver. I think maybe their grandparents do or my grandparents. Anyway, it was just outdated. We don't have silver for my child to polish. And I definitely got a good hoot, um, a good laugh out of the image of my children polishing stainless steel, like target utensils, <laughs> which is what we have. Um, so that was funny. They also have an activity for teaching your child how to shine shoes. Again, I'm not fancy enough or cool enough to have shinable shoes. Anyway, those two activities were a little bit outdated, but they did have some really good advice, which was teaching your preschooler how to wash dishes and do basic chores like dusting. Now, he, do he does help me clean already. We do clean throughout our school day. Not every day, um, that would be a bold faced lie if I said, <laughs> said that we're cleaning every day, um, but he does help me. But we do not do things like washing dishes. However, since reading this book, we have decided that it, it's actually a really good idea. We have plenty of plastic dishes, plenty of like our stainless steel silverware that they could start learning both toddler and preschooler how to clean them with some of those um, dish buckets. So that activity was actually a really good idea. I would not have thought to teach my child washing dishes at this age. They also talk about in this section the importance of doing puzzle and puzzles at home and then learning a little bit about geography and maps, which are already things that my child is very interested in. He actually has a couple of geography puzzles 
that um, it's kind of crazy how much he is already retaining from just doing puzzles of maps, which is really neat. So I do agree with that segment or that uh, sentiment as well. I think the puzzles and the geography is a really good idea. And she also talks about nature. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, we are very pro nature. We are very much so about being outside. So that was something else I felt like we could embrace from that section. Now the sensorial exercises section, which is section three, was actually really fascinating. This talked about different things like sound jars, for example. So you would take um, little jars, if you have them at home, and fill them with different things. So you do like two jars filled with beans, for example, two filled with buttons, two filled with, I don't know, coins. And then your children mix them up and your child is going to shake and try to match the sounds, which actually sounds pretty cool. I would not have thought to do something like that. They also have like scent jars where you're smelling different spices. And um, there were a couple other similar activities. Now the reading and writing section, which is the next one, talks about, oh boy. So they, they're talking about learning how to read and learning how to write. And they definitely have a very, I'm going to call it a rigid, um, defined schedule of activities that you are to do with your preschooler and you're going to be going through them at a certain pace. So it's going to be covering different activities that are like the movable alphabet, sandpaper letters, associating pictures and sounds, etc. But there's a very specific sequence. Um, the way that they do set this up though is that reading is not dependent upon writing. Um, which is good because I feel like if my, at least if my preschooler is typical at all is fine motor control for like pens and things is definitely behind where his uh, like reading skills are. So that was something I agree with. But again, they're very much so like you grab this activity. Once they master this activity, you kind of put that one away and you move on to the next one, which is very similar to how they do their, their arithmetic exercises, which is the next section. Um, so this is again, like, for example, in here, they recommend, like they have that recommended flow that at one point you're going to be doing sandpaper numbers and only after they, um, master sandpaper numbers, do you then go into, um, spindle boxes, for example, and I'll put a picture of like a spindle box so you can kind of get an idea of what that is. Um, so they have some very... I don't know, it's rigid. To me, like kids are different. And so maybe your child doesn't, like maybe they can understand the quantities and by seeing those manipulatives, those spindle boxes easier than it is like doing like the sandpaper numbers. I'm not sure, but um, there is a bit of rigidity there. Okay, and then the last section, which was like that home equipment, were filled with recipes. And that one was actually really cool. Not only did they include how to build a lot of the tools, if not all of the tools called out in the previous exercises that are Montessori specific, but they also give you recipes for paint and Play-Doh and yeah, and a couple other like small things that you can do at home, which might be useful. I will say I probably won't be making my own paint or Play-Doh, at least not very often. We've done Play-Doh once and it's just a big mess. So I don't know, maybe we'll use it one day, but I do think knowing how to like make a spindle box is pretty cool because those can be pretty expensive. Number rods, the same deal, those can be pretty expensive. So it was kind of nice seeing some um, suggestions on that front. All right, so I bought this book in 2021 for about $13. It is currently listed on Amazon for about $16. However, I bought it before I even heard of thrift books or book outlet. Bummer for me because it is cheaper on both of those. Um, it is also available at my, my local library. So this might be something available there as well. So definitely worth checking out your library if you are interested in picking up this book. Now, all in all, I rated this three out of five stars. Some pros. I thought that there were some really good gems in here. Um, I am interested in some Montessori activities and some of the Montessori philosophies. That being said, I'm not a diehard Montessori is the only way kind of individual. So maybe I wasn't the person that this book was targeting. 
Um, there's a bit, definitely a sense of, of, again, rigidity and they have very, or the author has very strong opinions of what is a right way to do something and what is a wrong way. And I think I'm just a little bit more go with the flowy, a little bit less rigid. Um, I don't think, for example, I'm harming my child if I have him looking at, let's say, number rods and sandpaper letters at the same time and spindle boxes, <laughs> you know? Um, but that might make the author cringe a little bit. <laughs> um, cons, again, it was outdated. Um, the other con that I would say for your price point is it is a pretty small book, which maybe that's a pro for you, but I feel like for how much it is new, um, I would have hoped for a little bit more content. Um, but again, if you can find it secondhand or cheaper from like another um, retailer, maybe that's a good option for you. Um, so yeah, that was basically it. I am glad I read it. I definitely, I'm always reading homeschooling and parenting books. And I am looking forward to reviewing more with you. Please comment down below um, any thoughts that you might have had. Have you read this book? What did you think of it? Is there a homeschooling or a parenting book that you've been wanting to read but you haven't had the time? Let me know, comment down below, and I'll prior prioritize reading it and reviewing it for you. All right, you guys, thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.